Okay, so today what we're gonna start talking about is we're gonna start talking about the basic considerations of marketing your products or services for the international market. And starting to think about, well, what are some of the considerations or the, you know, the things we need to think about to make sure that we can successfully market our product and explore an international market if that's what we decide to do. So there's a few real reasons for why we might consider going to an international market instead of always just sticking for the domestic Australian market. And some of the things are is that, you know, relatively, the, the Australian market is actually quite small. Okay, so population, 27 million people. Yes, that's a lot, but it's also about the size of the city of London. So really, we are still a small domestic market. Okay, so we might consider going overseas if need be. The other thing is, is there's... Um, it is a fairly competitive market. It's small, but it's also very competitive. And when it's very competitive, it means there's very tight margins. Okay. So what it means is there's already quite a few players in that market, um, in the local market. And once you start to get those players in there and it's a small market itself, a lot of people, not a whole lot of customers, things get very tight. Um, people are always considering value adding. Okay. It, it does get to become a space that is uh, very mature, very fast, very sophisticated. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard to break into and become the new player. Okay. The other thing is, is there's actually a bit of a low growth. Okay, so it's also factored that we've actually got low growth in the local market. Okay, it's not booming along and expanding out continually. It's small and it's slow growing. What that means is there's not always heaps of new opportunities coming up. So we might need to think about that, you know, like where are we going to take it next? The next thing about the local market is there's also, that's a high cost market in terms of uh, my marketing cost. Okay, it's a fairly sophisticated market, which means that once again, we need to use fairly sophisticated means and methodologies, which means it's a higher expense to be able to market to them. Um, also, given that there's a lot of competitors in there, we need to drown out the noise of the people that are trying to uh, prevent us from doing our trade. Um, it does make it that little bit harder to get in there and start to play there. All right. There's a reduction in tariffs and quotas. Okay, and what that's really starting to look at is we need to start thinking about, well, um, you know, the buying and selling goods and services overseas, um, overseas that they are becoming more attractive markets. Okay, so what that's really looking at is what the taxation system is doing, um, what government restrictions there are on importing, exporting, etc. That's changing around the world, so that's making it attractive to get into some of these places as well. Um, and also changes in technology. Okay, that's also driving the opportunity to really globalise. Okay, so once upon a time, you know, if you had a shop, you literally had a shop and you sold to the people in your local market. Um, now with technology getting better and better um, and the platforms there that we can utilize, all of a sudden it can make sense to sell our products and services internationally because people can easily shop at our online store, our online portal. Um, we've got things like webcams and webcasting information. Um, we don't need to be at a meeting anymore. We can use um, all sorts of, you know, virtual meetings and conferences, etc. cetera, um, you know, even having something as, as simple as Skype um, was a revolutionary concept that we once upon a time never had. So it's becoming easier and easier and easier to go international as opposed to the local market. These are the considerations for the local market and, and why you might want to go somewhere else. But that's not to say you have to go somewhere else, just that these are some of the reasons why you might consider it, okay, and thinking about where you want your business to go. Now, the different types of marketing you can do overseas is you might get into something like exporting. Okay, so you might actually manufacture and export a product overseas, that's one option. You can get into things like licensing, where you have a product or a piece of intellectual property that you might want to sell overseas, like the recipe to the, um, the Big Mac special sauce, um, you know, two all beef patty special sauce, pickles, cheese, lettuce, onion, sesame seed bun, that still makes a Big Mac, but it's the special sauce is under license. You know, Colonel Sanders, KFC, 11 secret herbs and spices, that can be manufactured under license in a different country. Okay, you might also get into something like a joint venture with another company where, um, you know, you might be providing one side of the puzzle, they provide the other, you know, whichever way it is, it's basically a partnership. Um, you could do a wholly owned acquisition, which is to start to buy companies overseas as well, um, or you might put things under management contracts. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways that you might affect that change. You need to start thinking through what might work for you, what might work for your company, and, and, and where do you want to go? So is it a case of take your product overseas, get someone to manufacture it overseas, partner up with a different company to come up with some sort of solution, buy the place overseas, or, or you know how you wanna go about that, okay? So there's a few different factors. This is maybe the reason why you start to look at it, and, and the other bit might be you know how you go about um, delivering that into effect on the ground. 
All right. Now, driving this, uh, we need to start thinking about our pest and steep, as always. You know, we love coming back to those sort of things. So having a look at that, we start to look at, um, very quickly, different things we're going to have to concern ourselves. And the first one is, is understanding a political system. Okay, so we need to make sure that we understand what the political system they're using is in the country that we're looking at going at. Um, you know, how do they operate? Who's in charge? You know, what does that mean for me? What are the taxes, etc.? Leading into the legal framework. Okay, so there's a legal framework we have to work within, and is that positive, negative to our trade? How's it going to affect it? What's it going to be? We need to start to look these things up. And once again, places like Austrade can become really handy there. Um, we also need to think about the cultural norms. Okay, so what's the culture they have in that country that we're looking to go to? Is it similar to ours, different to ours? What does that mean for my product? Um, how are they going to um, adapt to it? How are they going to react to it? Um, what's it going to be? Is it appropriate? And then we need to think about the economic factors. Okay, so when we start to look at economic factors, what's the exchange rate between here and there? Um, what's their economy doing? Is it growing, shrinking? Where is it going? Um, and how do we want to start putting this together? All right, so we've thought initially about why we might go. We've thought about techniques and methods we might incorporate to get there. Um, and then we're starting to think about the politics. Okay, so who's in charge? How does it run? How does it work? Um, taxes, fees, tariffs, trade, etc. We need to start looking that up. And, and Austrade is a great place to look onto that. So if you're not already there, okay. Start looking at people like Austrade, you know, different government websites. There's quite a lot of them, and they'll give you some great information about exporting and uh, importing, etc. Your legal frameworks you're going to have to operate within. Understanding the culture of the people that are there. How do they react to things? What are their normal behaviours? Uh, what are their views and visions? Once again, we start looking at uh, demographics, and we start to look at psychographic um, behaviours particularly, and then economic factors. So what's the economy doing? What's going up? What's going down? What's the exchange rates like? What's the long-term forecast looking like? Um, and how do we tie into that? Because we don't want to find ourselves going to a place that runs out of money. Um, we're hoping to get into a place where things pick up, not go the other way. Um, same, same for the exchange rate. We don't want to all of a sudden find ourselves gambling on the international stock market, and uh, or sorry, uh, exchange market, and finding it goes badly. So they're the basic initial considerations um, at the moment. Okay, so now that we've covered all those basics and we've understood you know, why we might go and we've understood... Um, you know, the, the methods we might start to use when we start to look at our basic considerations of really understanding what was effectively our steep. We then move on about, well, what's encouraging us to go? What, what's really driving this? We've looked at the negatives, what are the positives? Well, you know, some of the things that create opportunities for us are emerging needs. Okay, so in these, um, in, in international markets, we start to look at, well, what's coming up? Um, so if I look at somewhere like China, I see a rise in the middle class. Okay, as wealth is just, you know, redistributing their company, it's creating a whole new middle class, a whole new middle class which need a whole lot of products and services they're interested in. Okay, so if you look at an Australian context, uh, we're now selling a lot of wine to China. Historically, they weren't the greatest market for that, but as the middle class comes in and there's more money in the local economy um, that's, that's filtering down through the, the general populace, they're starting to get a taste for something a little bit different. So all of a sudden, we have opportunities to sell wine. Um, you know, and with that comes other luxury and consumer goods that probably uh, didn't necessarily have a market earlier. And we see that in various countries around the world where prosperity has boomed, um, people are starting to receive more, and now there's an opportunity there to sell something that wasn't available um, earlier. Um, you know, new and emerging economies, etc. So if we're, if we're paying attention to what's going on there, we can see these opportunities start up. Um, the use of technology. Okay, is also driving the opportunity, okay? Because once upon a time, as I say, technology was a little bit limited, but it's become more and more prevalent. Everyone has access to pretty much a computer on their phone. So more and more people, as the, as the expansion of the mobile phone network rolls out, and as more and more people are getting online, it just creates more and more potential shoppers for your business that ne weren't necessarily there before, okay? And that's on a global scale. So really, that's a, that's a driver for you, that there's new customers coming up all the time, and this is the first time they've started looking at purchasing these goods and services. So once again, if we can get in front of them, um, we're winning something. The other thing is, by having that large, um, having a large market, we achieve an economy of scale, okay? Because we're not just trying to produce goods and services for 25 million people that might be interested, okay? We've now got a massive global market, which means that I, instead of producing 10 or 20 objects, I can actually produce 200. And we know that if I go to the shop and ask them to make me 10 of something, it's one price, but if I ask for 1,000, the cost per unit comes right down, okay? I'm achieving those economies of scale. I can order in much um, greater numbers because I've got a far greater market. 
okay? And I don't have a lot of wastage and those sort of things. Okay, I can, I can really tailor that and I don't end up throwing stuff away. Um, I can achieve economy of scale. So jump on board that and start thinking about where you want to go there. And as we say, it's improved communication systems. Okay, so that's created an opportunity as well. All of a sudden, like the technology platform, people can communi communicate with us a lot easier. Um, it does improve the ability to then trade overseas and start to move into that space. Okay, and that's getting better and better as we go, despite the fact Australia's broadband and internet is probably not the best in the world. I think we're behind um, you know, Rom Romania or somewhere weird like that. But notwithstanding, you know, in the Australian market, we keep talking about getting fibre to the node and a whole lot of other things that are effectively there to try and improve our communications with the greater world. Okay? Um, we understand in Australia that that's really you know, becoming part of the, the global market is, is really important um, to offset the fact there are only a small number of people um, covered in this massive space. Right, so they're, they're really what's going to start to help you there. Um, and these are the things that are really going to help drive you. All right. Start to consider those, think about how they work for you, and we'll crack on. Now, the problem is there are a few barriers. Uh, this all sounds really good, um, and we're all very excited. And, and I know you're going uh, international marketing is the way to go. But look, some of the other things I need to think about, though, is the language. Okay, the minute I start marketing internationally, I need to think about what's the language on the ground. And then I need to be you know, fluent at, uh, at both languages, okay? So language, and I also need to understand the cultural context, okay? If I don't understand how my consumers are gonna to relate to me and my product, that's gonna create problems. Um, a classic example was um, there was a Gerber baby food um, actually put out um, their baby food in little jars and they had a picture of a baby eating the food on the jar. It was all very easy, you know, to us that makes perfect sense. However, they exported that, um, that particular product to a country where the literacy rates weren't all that great. And where the literacy rates aren't that great and people aren't that great at reading, what they do is they put a photo of what's in the, you know, what's in the container on the container. So these people have seen a baby on a jar of food. Okay, so very quickly they've assumed that, hang on, that jar is full of babies. Okay, so it creates a bit of a problem, true story. Um, they didn't understand what went wrong, but guess what? Uh, Gerber then quickly replaced that and put like an apple and other different things so people don't understand what's in it. So it's not a jar of baby food, it's a jar of baby food. All right, so crazy stuff, but it happens in marketing. Unintended consequences, all right? Um, and once again, language errors, we've seen it all before. Look on the internet, you know, translation fail, and you can see how quickly this can go badly for you in your business. Um, we also need to think about, once again, the politics. Okay, because the politics creates political pressure. Okay, so once again, um, you know, we've got everything from corruption and transparency through to just about anything else you can think about as far as politics. Okay, it's going to come into it. Um, there can be all sorts of different trade protections and tariffs. Something to consider fairly carefully. Uh, labour skills. Okay, if we're getting stuff manufactured overseas, uh, depending on the, uh, the economy and the, the technology and what they've been, you know, famous for making or not, um, you might find the labour market there to manufacture your product isn't really, it's not mature. They don't have those skills or um, they don't really have the facilities. We need to also think about distribution infrastructure. Okay, so pretty easy here. If I need to send something across Australia, it's, uh, it's dead simple. I walk down the road, there's an Australia Post office, and I can pretty much guarantee it'll be wherever I want it the next day. Um, we've all been around the world, we've all travelled to different countries, um, and sometimes you put it in the post at one end, and it doesn't appear out the other for three weeks, if it appears at all. Okay, so we need to think about, well, what is the distribution framework? Um, do they have a good logistics chain there? Can I get goods from myself to my customer reliably, on time, um, for a reasonable price? Is this gonna work? Okay, once again, communications infrastructure. Okay, so is there good uh, you know, communications in that country? Okay, do they have good communication infrastructure? Are there phone lines? Is there internet? Uh, what's the quality of the internet like? Um, am I able to communicate or is this not going to work so well? Um, you know, it can be if I don't have uh, availability of those things, I hadn't thought it through, I might not be dealing in a first world economy. Okay? Uh, and then lastly, I need to think about the various costs that might be involved, may also be a barrier. Um, that's things like setting up of the business, I need to think about transport, getting myself to and from, I need to think about any taxes, tariffs, fees or charges just incorporated in setting up the business. Okay, because they can be um, quite large upfront fees, plus there's also time traveling to and from that location, trying to find a uh, business premises and all the other sort of costs that are gonna lead into that. 
So I really need to think about the whole picture. I can't just take it as when it's set up, there might be other costs just getting to that position, okay? And they're really vital to start to think about from the very, very beginning. Okay, so now I've started to think about all those things. I've looked at um, what might be some of the benefits. I've looked at what might be some of the drawbacks. So I need to start looking at my different markets and having a bit of a think about that. So now what I want to do is I want to get to some sort of uh, position of, you know, if I'm weighing up several countries, I need to start thinking about, well, okay, so what were the markets I wanted to select? Okay, with all those things in mind, who am I going to pick? Okay, what countries do I want to go into? Don't just go, I just want to go into this one. Take a look at a few, make sure you've thought it through. Make sure you look at a couple of different options, you know, how wide is this going to be? And then start coming up with a criteria to judge them against. So then we're going to prioritize them, okay, in order of appeal. Okay, so what's appealing about them? Why do I want to go there? What's it going to offer me? How's that going to work? Is that really where I want to be? Okay, so we're starting to prioritize those things. And then start thinking about, well, length of involvement. Okay, so I need to put that. And, and you know, you can measure these any way you want. You know, you can come up with your own charts, whatever. And what we're trying to work out there is, well, okay. So I've selected my country, sorry. Okay, so I've selected where I want to go. I've thought about, well, you know, in order of appeal. So what's the most attractive option? Okay, who do I want to do business with? Why, etc. And also, I need to think about, well, how long do I want to be involved in that? Okay, am I looking to get into a short-term opportunity, which is there right now, which might not be there in 12 months or however long? How long is it going to take me to get in? How long am I then going to be there for? And how long is it going to take me to get out? Becomes a question. Um, if the opportunity is right here, right now, and for the next 12 months, everything's fantastic, but it's going to take me nine months just to get in, well, I'm only going to be able to capitalize on it for three months. What was the point? Okay, so if it's going to take me ages to get set up in the market, I might be able to find that on the other hand, I can get in there very quickly and operate, okay, which is going to assist my decision making. Okay, how long is it really going to take me? What's it really going to cost me? Um, how much do I really, 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 really want it? Um, and then I'm going to start to think about, well, let's start weighing these things up, okay? At the end of the day, the decision is still going to be yours, okay? You need to think about, well, why do you want to go in there and, and what you're trying to achieve? Um, but that's up to you. So what this is really boiling down to is target a specific market. Okay, so target the specific market. Identify your entry strategy. So how are you gonna get in there? How long is it gonna take? Okay, so what's, what's the best method to get in there and start the market in that place? Make sure you clarify the market potential. Okay, now, when you were looking at these things, did you say that sounds like a really good market and you found out from your cousin? Or was it a case of you actually went and researched it and made sure you knew what the potential was there for that market? And then we need to make sure that we've selected the right marketing mix. You know, is our price, place, product, promotion and the right target people, um, have we got our mix right, okay? Um, or if we're going to the seven P's, we can go to the seven P's, whatever it happens to be. But is it culturally appropriate? Um, are the prices reflective of what people are likely to pay there? Is the promotion methodology the way they can receive information? If they've got no communication systems and there's no internet, there's no point in having the best website in the country, they've got no internet, okay? And that is still the, the business reality in, in a few places. Um, you know, so actually getting that right um, and understanding the product things, um, you know, if I'm going to certain markets, it might need to be kosher food, it might need to be halal, it might need to be gluten-free. Who knows what it happens to be? But I need to make sure that people understand what they're going to eat. Um, we know in Australia, selling Vegemite overseas can be a bit of a challenge. Not everyone loves our Vegemite, so that product can be a little bit off. We might need to change it, take the salt out for some of the uh, international markets. All right? So clarifying our potential, we're making 100% sure that we know exactly what's going on there and we're looking at our statistics, whether it's through government trade websites, um, whether it's through getting um, you know, commissioned papers that tell us what's going on there, market analysis, etc. We made sure we've got a really crystal clear strategy about how we're gonna go in there, okay? So how do we wanna get into that country and what's gonna happen? Um, and we know that we've got that specific market. So exactly who? We're not just gonna say a country, we're not just gonna target you know, Japan, we're gonna target a certain group. What's the segment? What's the market? What's the specifics of that group of people? How big is it? How large is it? Where are they spread out to? And making sure we've got that really good information because if it goes wrong internationally, it can go wrong pretty large, okay? And that's gonna create problems with us. Um, you know, 
thinking about those, um, once again, the politics there and, and what some of the trends are, we need just to be wary of making sure that you know we're not the only people looking at that market. Other people are going to come in as well. Um, so we need to think about, well, who is going to come in there? Okay, increased global competition is a business reality. Um, also thinking about um, tariff barriers and trade barriers moving back and forth. I need to be you know, a bit aware about how that's going to go. Um, I need to start to think about, um, you know, is it a socialist economy? Is it a free market economy? What sort of economy is it? Who controls it? Um, and I also need to think about, well, where's the capital flowing from? So where's the money? Okay, how's the money moving through that country? Um, I need to start to think about the economic structure. Are they agricultural based? In other words, do they basically grow their wealth? Are they farming? Um, you know, they grow animals, etc. cetera. Um, I need to think about, you know, with our market, perhaps they're an industrial market. And what we're talking about in the industrial market is they make things, okay? They build cars, they build, okay? So builders, or are they a service-based economy, uh, which is predominantly made in, you know, enabling things. Is it, is it they make their money on their financial services industry, education industries, et cetera. Okay, so what's it based on and how does it generally work? Okay, so lastly, um, I need to think about where they are in terms of economic development. Are they a low-income country where, the, you know, not, people don't earn a whole lot of money? Are they starting to get to that lower middle income level where there's a bit more um, cash in the system and people are starting to feel that uh, economic benefit? Um, have they moved to a sort of a more upper middle income where we're starting to see that rise of that middle class where China's coming from, from some, you know, in, in quite a lot of areas, hence the growth in wine export, um, they, you know, become a massive uh, market there. And chocolate, that's the other one, chocolate. Um, are we starting to get to um, that high income country where there's a lot of wealth or are they mega rich? Okay, you know, we're, we're now selling something to you know, Dubai, where they're building crazy buildings and you know, money seems to be no object. I just need to have a bit of a think about where those all fit together, uh, package all that up into one pile of information and that'll give me a really good idea about where I'm going. And it's just food for thought to try and get a really good picture of, is this a good idea? What's working for it? What's working against it? What am I aiming at? Who am I aiming at? How much cash do they have? How do I get in? What's gonna stop me getting in? What are the laws I need to consider? And then put that as a bit of a picture and have a good hard think about it. Do that and we should start to be able to profile a bunch of people if we want to go international.